Hello, hello. Welcome to the latest endeavor at playing the Forgotten City. I'm gonna wait until 3 proper to actually join the game, but... Hello! Glad you could make it. Yeah, feel free to say hi in chat if you're here. Love to have you. I'll try to answer any questions as I go along. Also, if you've been following and you have uh, anything you particularly want me to look into, let me know. Maybe we'll go that direction. Hi, Kiki. Thanks for coming. Oh, hi, Nova. Yes, Freya is also with us today. I'll show you a bit. where you can actually see me in the frame. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's dive in. So, where did we leave off last? I feel like we were just chatting with people. Ah. Standing in the middle of the forum. Alrighty. So. We've got... We were just in here. The Shrine to Apollo. I do want to... Uh, say that I, I did... Uh, get some notes from... A, uh, a friendly classic scholar. David Serrano Lozano. Who is a... Very great scholar. He actually gave a talk on this at a conference, which I saw, which is how I got started here. Uh, quick recap. Um, so, from the start of the game, we wake up on a riverbank, and a woman named Karen says that her friend Al went to explore these ruins behind us. Could we go get him? She would do it herself, but he made her promise to stay here. So we go, we fall down a hole, and wind up in what appears to be a crumbled Roman city. Uh, Al is unfortunately no longer. Um, he's been turned into a golden statue of himself. He left a note that says, I'm so sorry you're stuck here. Hopefully you can find a way out. I couldn't. Um, and mentions a time portal. So we go up to this shrine, and it's got this wormhole-looking thing in it. You step in it, you wind up in the past, where this Roman city is thriving. Well, thriving. It's got 23 people in it. <laughs> Except three are missing. So we'll see about that. So we've talked to a couple of people. Um, basic setup for the world is that there is this thing called the Golden Rule. And if anybody sins in the city, and nobody quite knows what counts as a sin, everybody will be turned into a golden statue. And there are tons of golden statues around showing us that this has happened before. So we've got a few characters. We've got Sentius, the magistrate, who is, uh, has tasked us with figuring out what's going on and stopping it. Uh, we've got his daughter, daughter Sentia, who is homebound because her little sister Sentilla ran away and nobody's seen her in three weeks. Um, we've got an election coming up. Sentius is being challenged for magistrate by some guy named Maliolus, who seems pretty dodgy. He's using this gladiator named Domitius to intimidate people into voting for him. Um, Equitia, a Vestal Priestess, who seems pretty scholarly. <laughs> uh, Alright, what is that nonsense? Uh, I'm gonna have to find out how to moderate chat. Please, please don't, whoever you are, taking Murasaki's name in vain. Um, so this is the Shrine of Apollo, which is being used by a clinic. This is Lucretia, who runs it. This is Yulia, who has just died of poison somehow, not triggering the rule. Um, this statue is... Uh, most statues and, and friezes in this game are taken from real life. This one is the Apollo Belvedere. Uh, David was kind enough to send me a 
list of things that that he had noticed. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, congrats on the first bot. Uh, I really should uh, should get on that uh, moderation Mira stuff. Keep you safe. Thank you, Lucretia. So these freezes here, also taken from real life. I still haven't managed to find this one, um, which I think is probably actually the rape of Lucretia, which is one of the sort of founding stories of Rome, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but this one is taken from, uh, this is a freeze of uh, Hadrian, Emperor Hadrian, who is set after his his reign is actually after the setting of this game so that's pretty interesting now who are you oh galerius we've met oh check it out so georgius a uh a greek clothing merchant he's using the statues as a <laughs> to vend his wares that's kind of great oh look he's got some real nice stuff here he he really has traveled around the world uh, we've we've talked to him before, so I'm not gonna spend too much time there, at least not right now. Uh, so this kind of t countertop is actually I'm gonna I'm gonna pause because time passing does actually matter in this game. Um, but this kind of countertop is actually extant in places like Pompeii, where we would see like sometimes you'd see them with little bowls in the top where they'd have fires beneath so that they could. Uh, yeah, I've paused it. Um, I'll resume so you can see. Oh, no. It's... Huh. That's strange. Has it been that way the whole time? That's so odd. Okay. Hold on a second. Oh, dear. Well, that's no good. Alright. Tell you what I'll do. I'm going to exit out of game. And all right, it's still displaying. How odd. Okay, I'm just gonna check all of my cord connections. I did pause during the recap, but I was actually... Let's see... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's the screen I'm actually on now. Let's try going back in. You're seeing it actually do stuff now? <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'll go back to them. <laughs> It'll take us just a minute to reset. I am not at all sure why it did that. How strange. Thanks for letting me know. Who knows how long I would have gone without noticing. This is all the stuff I usually don't make you watch. We'll go a little past four today to make up for that.
Yeah, if it freezes again while I'm playing, let me know as soon as it does, because that shouldn't be happening. <laughs> I had checked beforehand, but... Technology, am I right? Taking longer than usual to load, too. In the meantime, let's... oh no. Okay, it's still going. Here, have some cat. I don't know why it's taking so long to load. Technical difficulties. Maybe I should reboot the whole system. Although why it would load to this point and not beyond, I really don't know. Okay, let's see if restarting the system helps. Okay. There we go. Alright, so we are back to the forum. Are y'all seeing this now? Ooh, it's a little bit laggy. Alright, good. Wah. Okay. So let's go check out Apollo Belvedere. Oh! What? Oh no. This isn't right. This isn't right at all. This is not what this space usually looks like. Uh, feels like it hasn't loaded about half the items in here. It's just Lucretia and a very, very glitched out Yulia. Okay, uh... What is happening here? What if I come back in? No? No? It's still... Uh, well, crap. Maybe I need to close this out again. Sigh. Uh, I don't know what's happening. I've had three perfectly functional <laughs> streams where nothing has gone wrong. I guess it was time.
Will it though? Will it? Okay, that's a lot faster. All right, how we doing? Okay, much better. All right, here's our Apollo Belvedere. This this little shrine to Apollo. Much better. Um, and then uh, here's our Hadrian freeze. Uh, this is Lucretia, who is working in the shrine as a slapdash physician, as it were. And here's that freeze I didn't recognize. Oh, high score. Um, so, Kiki, if you recognize this, I'd love to know what it is, because I have not been able to find it. Uh, but I think it might be a, a, an image of the Rape of Lucretia just based on Roman guy looking like he's kidnapping a woman. Um, just just guessing. But, but yes, here's here's our lovely recognizable bearded Hadrian out of out of sequence. Um, then notice this guy's awkward neck angle. That is because these statues will move to look at you. Not consistently, but just enough to be freaky. Um, so here is here's our Greek friend Georgius. Uh, yeah, it could be one of the Sabine women. That's true. Um, for those watching, and I'm gonna pause it briefly. Okay, this is what the normal pause screen looks like. So if it goes frozen, tell me. Uh, but so for those watching who don't know, the rape of the Sabine women is another of Rome's founding myths. Uh, myths. Um, where the early settlers of the city uh, under Romulus, um, they were all men, and so they needed some wives. And so what they did is they just uh, they held a feast for their neighboring city and then kept all the women and slaughtered all the men. Like you do. And that, that was the origin of Rome, somehow. Cool beans. All right, so, so yeah. Uh, given what we know about these statues, using one to display salve. a toga, kind of amazing. They do say salve, which makes me happy. Ooh, interesting. I did not ah, know that. A fellow traveler from a faraway land. That is true. Thank you for noticing. So, so here. Georgius is really quite exotic wear is this like lovely pink and that nice dark carmine red and golden thread. But he just wears this like white thing. But yeah, Key, that's that's really interesting to know. Like that some of these friezes are are put together from others. So, you know, like I said, there were several scholarly consultants on this, and so most of the stuff here comes from something or other. Uh, but yeah, uh, a lot of it is repurposed and recontextualized, so I guess that's not too surprising that they would put together Frankenfreezes. Uh, but here's that, uh, that counter I was talking about that looks an awful lot like the store counters we would see in Pompeii. Um, this one holding his his dyes, uh, that bright purple powder might be a little bit much for even a murex, but you know. Um, and we have some lovely floor textiles as well. Um, just all kinds of things. Sackcloth. <laughs> Love it. But look at that bright blue! I just... 
And that's that's a, a painted example, so probably his own decoration. Um, we have everybody's chests just sitting around. Uh, we do have some examples of chests like this from the Roman era. We're not gonna we're not gonna steal his money. It's a bad plan. And then this little back area looks like there's something here. Uh, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what. Clearly, it's intended to be a changing room. I do not know if they had changing rooms in ancient Rome. So that's one of these little shops. Ah, a fellow traveler from a faraway land. Oh, we've got another of these lion tripods, although this one's just a brazier. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, this this is a bakery. So we've got our uh, Pompeian carbonized bread loaves. Oh, did I accidentally take it? Oops. I didn't necessarily mean to do but that, but sure. We'll see if that breaks the golden rule. Um, this, uh, this style of oven is found in Pompeii and this kind of mill as well. But no baker. Not yet, anyway. Lots of statues. Lots and lots of statues. Oh, you see? She just turned to look at me. Ooh. Whisper, weighed against the current. I do not know what that means, actually. Some kind of grain. Must be grown locally. So that'll be Galerius's. Silphium resin. Ah, uh, that's pretty great. It actually says Silphium on it. So I could actually steal this item. But no. That would definitely break the rule. Um, you see here little spoons for extracting it. Our merchant seems to be absent, trusting in the rule to keep people off of his stuff. Um, very nice painting or of little glass pots, I guess. Another shop counter. Another bust of Ares. Do you recognize this bus, Kiki? I I know we've got another bust of oh yikes of Athena around and this the same Lararium. Oh, that's pretty. That's very nice. A lot of people cowering. Ooh, got some graffiti on this shop. It says, well, they'll, they'll translate it as sinner, I'm sure. Yeah. Sometimes I stare at the great temple on the bluff, and I think, whatever is in there, it has to be important. Let's talk to you. We haven't talked to you yet. So this is Virgil. Ah, a new face. Salve, and welcome to a little community. My name's impossible to pronounce for most people, so you can just call me Virgil. I oh, desperately I want to know his real friend. name. What with Julia's death, I wish we could have met under better circumstances. Mm, nice. So that that Mars bust being is currently at the Hermitage Museum. Very nice. Okay, so let's find out what Virgil's story is. Well, I'm an architect. Or at least I was back in Rome. That's probably too grandiose a term to describe what I do here. Help out with repairs and try to stop old buildings from collapsing on people. That kind of thing. 
But you probably don't want to hear about the ingenious architecture or mysterious history of this place. Lies! Tell me everything. Oh, I'm glad you asked. Some of these shrines were constructed hundreds of years ago. Which means Romans have been arriving here for now, at now. least that long. It's not a French but accent. It's a Gallic accent. Me. Exciting, the isn't it? The oldest shrine in this avenue <laughs> isn't Roman at all. It's Greek. So yeah, we've got a Greek shrine hanging around here, and the the strong indication that these buildings were here long before any of these people wound up here. So I bet he knows in detail what's a, an imitation Greek style and what's actually Greek. So I'm gonna be interested to see what he has to say. Well, yes, that could be the reason. Or it could mean that there were Greeks living and worshipping here before the Romans arrived. Which begs the interesting question, who really built this place? And could it be far older than any of us imagine? If only there was a way we could talk to the people who came here before us. The stories they could tell. So tell me about the architecture. Gladly. Personally, my favorite thing about this place is the aqueducts, those series of adjoining arches. They're an ingenious feat of Roman engineering, with a very practical purpose. They take fresh water coming from outside the city and distribute it all across the chasm. It's funneled below the palace and into a cistern beneath the great temple. Some of it flows down into another cistern beneath the villas, and the rest is funneled to the shrine of Proserpina, where it fills the lake and allows us to fish and farm. So we saw those uh, those aqueducts from afar uh, on our initial way into the city. So that's that's pretty neat that they're actually coming from outside the city and not just you know from from the water that we can see. Hey, not so loud! Just talking about that could anger the gods for all we know. I'm just saying it's paranoid. But you'd have to find a way inside somehow. Just please try to be a bit more discreet about it. All right. So tell me about you that temple you were talking temple? about. This one's a bit of a mystery. Given the way it's positioned so prominently, looking down on us, it's clear that whoever built it felt it was the most important temple in the city. Unfortunately, someone else went out of their way to keep its purpose a mystery. You see, usually a temple is dedicated to a particular god, like Proserpina or Diana or Apollo. Usually, that god is obvious. But in this case, it's unknown. There's an obelisk out the front, which probably used to bear the name of this unknown god. But it appears some barbarian defaced it. And of course we can't get inside because it's locked up tighter than the temple of Saturn in Rome. And that contains the treasury. So we're all left wondering, which god is that temple dedicated to? And could it be the one responsible for the golden rule? Unless somebody figures out a way inside, I suppose we'll never know. An obelisk, yeah. Um... I feel like there might be a way to ask of him course. about that. Uh, but but yeah, so nice mention of the treasury in Rome, the temple of Saturn. Um, and I love his use of barbarian here, right? So he's clearly not from Rome or even Italy. He's from somewhere in the outskirts. He's got this accent. He's got a name nobody can pronounce. Um, and he's calling someone a barbarian, which is, I think, just kind of wonderful because it sort of implies that he doesn't think that they're a barbarian because of, you know, the normal Roman or Greek reasons you might call somebody that, which is, you know, othering them for their culture or their language, but because they defaced great art and architecture. Um, and yeah, it is interesting that there's an obelisk. Like, why would there be an Egyptian 
monument in front of a Roman temple, but we've already got this, this implication from him noticing that there's Greek architecture here too. So, uh, I mean, they're not being too subtle, I think, that this place is a lot older than the Romans in it. So let's uh, directly contradict his, uh, <laughs> his request that we be subtle about trying to get out. You wouldn't believe how often the new ones ask that question. But I tell you the same thing I tell everyone else. There are much worse places to live out your days. You might have a few sleepless nights thinking about the golden rule. But once you get used to the fear, knowing that a single slip-up could cost you everything, it's not too bad. Nothing new to me, anyway. Now that tells a sad story, huh? What do you mean? Oh, I just mean I grew up in the Batavi tribe, far to the north in Novio Magus, and learned to expect a bit of hostility. They weren't nearly as tolerant as the Romans. So, the Batavi uh, out in Novio Magus, that is somewhere on the Rhine, so probably that territory that in modern history at least goes back and forth between France and Germany a lot and uh, probably at the time the Germanic tribes and the Gallic tribes would have been interacting right across it so so the Romans tolerate some things for sure and definitely not others so we can kind of get a hint of what he's getting at there especially if somebody's calling him a sinner right Look, I haven't done anything wrong, if that's what you're thinking. Somebody just has a problem with my preference for male company. Rude. Hey, nothing gets by you, huh? <laughs> Sorry, that was mean. <laughs> yes, I like men. And when you grow up in the north as I did in the city of Novio Magos, you expect a bit of hostility. Uh is it that far are not known for their tolerance. I, ha I haven't looked I at the map in a couple of weeks. Or driven away to know the yeah, cost of not keeping might be your as far north as the Dutch. To yourself. So I hit who I was for, what was it, nearly ten years? Watching what I said and where I looked. But that kind of fear eats away at you slowly, until living isn't any better than the thing you were afraid of. Needless to say, since I'm now living underground, halfway across the known world, with an assumed name. My openness didn't go down well among the enlightened folk of the Batavi. That does suck. Nice of you to say, but not necessary. In any case, the Romans are far more accepting, and among them, I get to be who I am. Or at least, I thought that was the case. It seems I was wrong. Yeah. Uh, it's not just graffiti. I have quite a collection of handwritten notes, too. The strange thing is, I keep my personal affairs to myself. I've never really been interested in any of the men here. Not my type. So I'm not sure what I could have done to upset this person. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably one of those cultists. And by cultist, he definitely means Christian. Strange bunch. They insist there's only one god. And that he considers my nature a sin. Can you believe that? If there are any of them here, they won't admit it. Not since they supposedly burned down half of Rome last year and went into hiding. All I know is if these threats keep escalating, eventually my secret admirer is going to cross a line and break the golden rule. What? Really? I... I didn't expect that, but thanks. It's always a pleasure to meet someone so selfless. I'm glad you arrived when you did. I'd start by figuring out who the cultists are, or maybe ask around among the merchants here. Someone who lives or works in the forum must have seen something. But if you find them, please don't hurt or humiliate them. I suspect they're just confused. Yeah. I don't really know that the early Christians would have harassed somebody for being gay the way that they do now. I feel like that's a little bit overmuch. Um, I mean, certainly there's plenty of nastiness in early Christian writings, 
Uh, but that doesn't strike me as the sort of thing that they would really go after, especially not when somebody's not doing anything. So that, that feels a little out of place, but you never know. Some people are just assholes. Some people say it's divine, the work of a god, but I'm not so sure. It just seems so flawed to me. Like it's distinctly human. I mean, once you've been here long enough, you notice people doing things that just seem so wrong to you. But this so-called god doesn't seem to care. Which means one of two things. Either you don't know the difference between right and wrong, or this unknown god doesn't. And I'm pretty sure I know the difference. Do you? I like him. Good. Then I hope you'll agree that there are only two ways of dealing with unfair rulers. The first is to leave. The second is to remove the ruler from power. And it seems leaving may not be an option. Oh, for a minute there I thought he was talking about Sentius. Good question. It's best if I say no more, but... I hope you will give it some thought. So, were you also well, talking about Sentius? Maliolis is talking about loosening some of the restrictions in this place. And while it's all a bit vague, mm, at maybe. least he has a vision. My vote isn't for sale, if that's what you're asking. Nice to talk to you. Oh, he seems like a perfectly nice fellow. We have some nice appropriate tools for the era. Um, if a little bit crude. I'm certain that that he had better when he was in Rome. But we do have plenty of hammers and a nice bellows. Another of these shovels. Um, I did... Dave, David did send me an image of the shovel, the real one. Let's see if I can find it. Um, which does not, unfortunately, answer the question of why it has that weird ornamentation on the sides, but a Roman incense shovel, or batilum, 1st to 2nd century CE, in the George Blumenthal collection in New York. Definitely a bit fancier than would be used for just shoveling fireplaces. Um, broken bench that Virgil's probably working on. See if he's got anything interesting in his chest. One of those notes. Somebody sees him. Okay. Ah, wasn't kidding about a collection. Somebody really thinks that, uh... Uh, so it could slot into a holder. Uh, maybe. I wonder if it had something to do with, um, with the incense itself. But, but some kind of, some kind of, uh, holder is certainly possible for at least why it has sticky-outy bits, as it were. So, somebody's being nasty to this poor little... Poor little guy. Um, let's see, so... Yes, the statues stare at us. Hi! Oh, hello! Help! You have to do something! A man arrived in the baths. A real nasty sort, with his face all covered up, and he's got a weapon. A weapon? That is no good. Something, or he's gonna break the golden rule. Thank you. He's Oops. still in there somewhere. I wanted to talk to you I more. To hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. Oh, our whisper is telling us not to let her do that. What? We don't have time for this. I have to go. <sighs> Thank you. 
Uh oh. The shrine is collapsing. That's bad news. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. She is not gonna make it out of that. Yikes. Well, that's that's bad. That is very bad. And there's still an armed stranger somewhere in the baths. I don't know what we're gonna do about it, but we're gonna try. Oh yeah, she was not kidding. Stop right there. I'm Looks very Assassin's Creed, huh? Quinctius Crispus, otherwise known as Quinctius. Do you know where he is? I do not have I'm any not idea sure who I that is. That, no. So allow me to explain something to you. I am here with orders from Emperor Nero himself to find and execute the cultist Quinctius for terrible crimes against the Empire. So, if you tell me the truth, I will allow you to live. But if you lie to me, or otherwise obstruct the Emperor's business in any way, I will put this arrow through your chest. Is that understood? Uh, yeah, okay. Got it. Thank you. Now tell me, who are you people, and what is this place? Yeah. A small community. Ha. I was told Quintius was a cultist, but I never thought he'd be foolish enough to lead me right to the heart of his mystery cult. Ha! Mystery cult. Well, let's see what he thinks a mystery cult is. Oh, don't play coy with me. I don't care if you're worshipping Bacchus, Magna Mata, or Christ. You lot are all the same to me. Always sneaking off to your secret sanctuaries, indoctrinating each other with your little mantras. The Emperor may have tolerated your activities up until now, but after what Quinctius did, those days are numbered. Yeah, so, uh, using quite correctly the more, the more traditional meaning of cult, a small and secretive sect or religion, and, uh, as I've mentioned in a lot of my videos, uh, and I'm sure chat is familiar with this, um, you know, that could mean any, any deity or, or set of beliefs. They don't, they don't really distinguish between the cult of Sibylle or Mithras or, uh, Christ, because to them, it's all just you're worshiping in secret and that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> if if you have if you're worshiping in private then you have something to hide and clearly Nero has decided that uh, what this particular cult is hiding is the people who started the great fire in Rome you say that but if you're not a cult then why go to such great lengths to keep this place a secret So you admit you're not allowed to leave. Threatening me is not going to help you, but in any case, he that just sounds determined. an awful lot like a cult to me. Ah. And I saw the inscription say, <laughs> "Oh, Pythagoras is cult." I, oh, I made some joke some earlier about cat toe beans and naming a cat Pythagoras. That's, it's definitely going to happen at some point if I ever get a male cat. Naming Pythagoras. Uh, a distinction without a difference. You've clearly been indoctrinated into this nonsense. Now tell me, where did you lot get enough gold to make all Oh, I dare sandals? you to melt one down. Do it. You lot are practicing human sacrifice too. You people disgust me. You're distorting. Yes, us. yes. Because I'm the real villain here. Actually, it's yeah. All clear kind of. Now. The secret sanctuary, the indoctrination, the mantra, the human sacrifice. You're cultists. 
and there's no doubt in my mind. What baffles me is how a person can believe in something with such zeal. They just can't see what they've become. However, you still have a chance to redeem yourself by telling me where Quintius is. Do not waste it. Let's see if we can bribe him. Gold? <laughs> I don't care about gold. You don't seem to understand the situation. So let me make it abundantly clear. The only thing I care about is carrying out my duty to execute the cultist Quinctius. I have spent many exhausting months tracking this arsonist through cities and villages, roads and forests, bribing stubborn travelers and peasants for leads. At times, I was so bone tired I could have sworn I'd approached the brink of death. But, um, but still, day and night, I pressed on for the glory of the Emperor. So, you see, I know he's here. Turning back is not an option. And right now, the only thing standing between me and my triumphant return to Rome is you. So, for the last time, are you going to tell me where he is? Or do I have to put an arrow in you and ask the next person I meet? Very well. Here's what I know. He's a 40 to 50 year old man with distinctive eyes, one green and one blue. He's also known to have delusions of grandeur. I mean, this Quinctius was not on cult, the register. Your cult are responsible for starting the fire which burnt half of Rome to the ground and killed thousands in the process. So, because we're playing the archaeologist, we have the option of giving the modern archaeological opinion, which is that this was a scapegoating. Somehow I don't think it will endear us to him. Maybe I'll just ask for more information. All I know, all I care about, is that the Emperor believes he is guilty and wants him dead. The details are not my concern. This is your last chance. Are you going to tell me where he is or not? I don't know who he is. Then you're of no use to me. Do you have any last words? There's a good way to convince him we're not cultists, right? <laughs> I love that joke. That's so great. Well, I'd say that's rather convenient, since I was planning to kill you all anyway. <laughs> Well, there the we go. many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Well, he got killed. Let's not join him. <gasps> Yo, why am I stuck? Ah, go faster. Hurt to go faster. Might die. Yes, I can see that he's watching through their eyes. Ah! Oof. Ah! Maybe if I zigzag. goes Domitius. She's gonna turn her sights on me soon. Well. No getting out of that. Guess we'll continue from the last save. Didn't even make it to the time portal. So, where did it save? Let's find out. Uh, let's see. I am at the edge of the baths? Where is Fabia? Okay. Help! There she is. You have to do something! 
Let's not accidentally hit the button this time. A real nasty sort, with his face all covered up. And he's got a weapon. You have to do something, or he's gonna break the golden rule. I don't have a weapon. None of us do. The magistrate made us throw them all into the chasm. So now this man's bow is the only one in the city. You'll just have to improvise. Uh, how is this my you problem? Daft or just <laughs> if you don't stop him, we're all it going is to definitely die. my problem. Thank you. He's still in there somewhere. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. Yeah, no, don't do that. Don't do Hear that. what? What? We don't have time for this. I have to go. Oof. We don't have an option, apparently. Because I wasn't... I wasn't, uh, alive to see this happen before. Oh. Terrible news. Oh, I wish I could have saved her. But, uh, you know what? I'm not gonna go confront that assassin. That seems like a losing strategy right now. So, uh, I'm... Oh, hello. Uh, we hello? did see something about somebody being locked up. My name's Dooley. I live here now because I got in trouble and they... They said they had to lock me up. What did you do? I don't know. I don't remember things so good. I think it's just because I was... looking for treasure. Yes. But I wasn't. I was just looking. They said I did it. More than once. But I can't remember things so good. Then they called me mean names. They called... They called me a liar, Billy. So he's clearly having some kind of mental issues. And if you'll remember when we first met Galerius, he thought that we were crazy pants. So, um... And said that that's okay and we're friendly to everyone here. This does not look friendly to me. Yes. They said I have to live here now. And gave me this letter. But I'm not good with words. Do you... Do you think you could read it for me? I could read that for you, yeah, sure. Magistrate Sentius to Duilius. I'm writing in writing to you in relation to your incorrigible antisocial behavior arising from your obsession with an alleged lost treasure. While I am sympathetic to your plight and the passing of your guardian Hannibal some weeks ago, I wish to impress upon you an important message. The treasure you seek does not exist. Given your memory limitations, it seems likely you simply misremembered. More importantly, since you have on several occasions been caught trespassing, including around the cisterns, which are strictly off-limits to all citizens, I have reluctantly come to the conclusion that you are a liability to this community, and must have your freedom limited lest you break the golden rule. It is my hope that this letter will assist you to remember why you are incarcerated, should you experience further lapses in memory." That's very sad. And if you'll recall, Hannibal was found dead in the cisterns, being eaten, or at least so Domitius says. Is there a next page? No, it doesn't seem so. Eh. What does it say? Ah, uh, my treasure. My friend Hannibal used to look up. He said he always would. But then, he died. It was very sad. He said, if anything ever happened to him, I had 
to find something very precious hidden away. He gave me this key and made me promise to keep it safe until I found the treasure. A key? But I couldn't find it. All I remember is he said something about the cisterns. But when I went up to the high one, they put me in here. Now nobody looks after me. Except my friend Galerius. And Ek. Ek. The priestess lady. She's okay. a nice lady. So Galerius is friendly. That's good. Hannibal said I sh shouldn't give it to anyone I didn't trust. But maybe you could help me get out of here. Then I, I would trust you a lot. Galerius already tried that. He said the magistrate wouldn't listen, no matter what. Hmm. That's an interesting question. What about the rules? I don't want everyone to get in trouble because I was bad. Poor Dooley. Like, Galerius? He's nice. I like Galerius. He made me a doll and everything. If you help make him magistrate, he can get me out of here and I can give you the key to my He treasure. probably would be a good magistrate. Hannibal said it was in the cisterns. I can't remember what it was, just that it was way up high and very precious. So, this probably is uh, not going to be very enlightening, but let let's have a chat, it. see what he has to say. Really? It makes me very sad. Go. You mean a little fixated, huh? Treasure. My friend Hannibal used to look after me. He said he always would. But then he died. It was very sad. He said if anything ever happened to him, I had to find something very precious hidden away. He gave me this key and made me promise to keep it safe until I found the treasure. But I couldn't find it. All I remember is he said something about the cisterns. But when I went up to the high one, they put me in here. Now nobody looks after me. Except my friend Galerius and Ek. Ek. The okay. Priestess. Let's, let's see. Okay, that seems to be all we can get out of Dooley for now. Poor fella. It's dark back here. This is not a nice place. Seems like this was some kind of animal cage, if you ask me. Uh. Do not put fire. Oh no, the election's on. <laughs> this is gonna go poorly. Oh, what's that? Dooley's note. Oh. Hey, he's not bad with words. And check it out, you can kind of see this is papyrus. Um, it's got that characteristic texture of the uh, interwoven reeds. Uh, do not put a fire that close to what I presume is flour. That can explode. What's all this? So we've got a uh, more little merchanty stuff, I guess. Ah, so we're here right next to. talk to you? Oh, can I talk to you? 
Oh boy, this is not gonna go well, is it? Citizens, we have a quarate body of voters gathered here to elect the city's magistrate. The you have funny eyes. Sextus Sentius Imperiosus. Oh, looks like and you do. Maliolus Gurgis. Well, I'm not gonna As stick agreed, around and get shot. With ballots, and candidates will abstain from voting. Let's make this quick. As I say your name, call your vote. I'll start with you, Horatius. Unfortunately, Sentius has to die for us to be able to go through the portal. So... <sighs> so, this is presumably not a real-world freeze, or at least not in its entirety, uh, since the circular portal is a fabrication of this game. But the uh, depiction of of Karis and Proserpina doesn't look terrible. Like that that seems pretty realistic. I don't know if it's actually from that sort of thing. So what is up this way anyway? It was blocked off in the other time. Nobody owns these. I now. Hmm. All right then. Great difficulty, I can climb the ladder. <laughs> I want to get up there. There we go. Alright. Now where, where the heck am I? shall suffer no. for the sins Time. of the one. Get me out of here. Oh. Sentius. go. It's up there. Where's, where's the exit onto that level? Uh, there we are. Okay. Oof. Okay. Back through the wormhole and maybe on this day we can save that poor woman in yellow. Yikes. Okay. Uh, let's try this again. Oh, 
I, Galerius? Uh, salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? Yeah, let's uh, just... I don't think Let's just shortcut so. this. I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, Bacchus, how much did I drink last night? Uh, sorry to have bothered you. Terrifying Roman era zipline. <clears throat> There's Equitia. But right now. Okay. So, Decius the Merchant. Salve, stranger, and welcome to our idyllic little slice of the Empire. I'm Decius. Certainly. All I ask is a reasonable price of a thousand denarii. Reasonable. Oh, it's perfectly legal. Simply a question of supply and demand, I'm afraid. Take it or leave it. Here what? Ah, uh, you sure you're feeling all right? If you're hearing things, perhaps you should pay a visit to Lucretia's clinic. We don't want another navy on our hands. Well, she claimed the statues were whispering to her. Nobody else could hear it. Then she shut herself in the palace and we never heard from her again. But I digress. Do you want this selfie or not? Well, if you did that, you'd break the golden rule. And we'd share the same fate as the last lot who lived here. Is that what you want? Well... Don't you dare. The Whisper's telling me to. What do you think? Should I? <laughs> Probably a bad idea. I'm gonna do it. Whatever's in that great temple. The many <laughs> shall suffer <laughs> oh, for the sins of the one. Well, that did break the rule. I end up feeling real casual about causing everybody's death after a few rounds of this. He's not here yet. Sentius, I'm already here. Now, the real question is, do I have the Sylphium when I come back through? Because I think I will. So, oops, that's not the thing. Uh, how do I check my inventory? I do! Alright, so... I have... So stealing the bread didn't do anything. I guess I'm entitled to that. But stealing the Sylphium did trigger it. And now, if I hurry, we can go save Yulia, too. Salve, friend. Mind telling me who you are and why you look like you've just taken on a gladiator and lost? That's what happens when we walk out before we've finished healing. 
<laughs> no consequences. But small consequences. Uh, I don't think so. I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, Bacchus, how much did I drink last night? Uh, sorry to have bothered you. See if we can save some lives. That's what Groundhog Day is all about, right? What yes. are you doing in here? Can't you I have Sylphium for dying? you. She's been poisoned. She needs the resin of a plant called Silphium, but that Kulas Cumulatus Decius won't give it to me. What? Quick, give it here. Yulia, Yulia, you need to swallow this. Here, let me help you. Hopefully in a moment she should be able to breathe normally. That was extraordinary. How did you know she needed this exact thing? And at <laughs> this exact moment? Are you some kind of oracle? No, I just listened to the statues, that's all. I really don't know what to say here. I mean... Let's just be honest. A what? I'm sorry, I must have misheard you. I think it's your accent. Because it sounded <laughs> like you said time... <laughs> But well, that's kind of that's a reasonable are, response. <laughs> that was like the gods hearing my prayers and intervening. That may you in fact be exactly what it life, was. And you should be proud of yourself. She might even be able to thank you herself in a few moments. And maybe she can tell us who poisoned her and who she meant when she was muttering about that snake's cruel black eyes. In the meantime, I'm happy to help you with whatever it is you need. No, no. That's a shame. Thanks again for saving Yulia's life. Apollo smiles upon you. Woohoo! One person saved. Let's see if we can talk to her. Ooh, her hair is shorn short. Oh. She's not just a bondsman, you. is she? Sorry. I'm still a bit out of it. Uh, but thanks for trying to help me, I suppose. Was there something you wanted? Lucretia says I'm supposed to rest. As much as I'm grateful that you tried to help me, it's just not safe for me to talk about it. Please, no more questions. The Golden Rule. <laughs> that's the least of my worries. The well, gods may be that's cruel, something worth noting. but Maliolus and Claudia are far crueler. Please, just leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. I do feel bad pushing her, but at some point I am going to need to know. No oh. consequences, right? The system has so says so the chat. Like you. I can tell you, but it's a long saga. All right. I'd been here about a week. When it dawned on me, I'd be trapped here for the rest of my life. I could hardly breathe, and I knew I had to get out somehow. So when my new friend Aurelia offered me a secret way out, Aurelia. I would have done anything. Okay. And then I learned her asking price. A thousand denarii. She was supposed to be my friend. I told her it would take me years to save up that much. So she suggested I take out a loan from Maliolus. And I did. I had to sign an agreement, saying I'd work off the debt over 30 years. But I figured I'd be out of here so soon, it wouldn't matter. I paid Aurelia, and she gave me her so-called way out. Do you want to know what it was? Hemlock. 
Well, that is what Lucretia said she was poisoned with it. Drink this, she said, and you'll be out of here in no time. Of course, I demanded my money back, but she refused. She pointed to a sign on her tavern saying, Let the buyer beware. Then she just looked at me with those cool black eyes and she... She laughed. She immediately told Maliolus I'd tried to escape without paying him back. Only, he didn't seem upset or surprised at all. In fact, he just thanked her. Wow. And that's when that's I realized the horrible. two of them had planned the whole thing. Very from realistic. The beginning. And doesn't break the golden rule. That's what I said to the magistrate. I went to Sentius and begged for help, but he said the law was clear. I'd signed over my labor for 30 years, and there was nothing he could do. I thought about resisting, too. But Maliola said if I didn't submit, I'd break the golden rule. And I couldn't be responsible for all those deaths, so he locked me in his villa. Confiscated everything I owned as collateral, and made me wear immodest, humiliating outfits while I worked day in, day out. His wife Claudia was just as bad. She sent me to work on an endless stream of futile, demeaning tasks. I'd be on my hands and knees, scrubbing the floor clean for hours, only for her to pour slop on it and hiss, You missed a spot. Those two took everything from me. <sighs> but they forgot to confiscate one thing. My hemlock. I just wanted it to be over, but it seems I messed that up too. Should have drunk all of it. I brought it on myself. I trusted one of the most callous human beings I've ever met, and tried to swindle the other. I don't know how I could have been so stupid. Oh, that hurts. Oof. This is a very classic and well-written story of entrapment and abuse and how it doesn't doesn't get brought under the law. When I've recovered, I expect their thug Domitius will come for me. He'll escort me back to their villa, and I'll be right back where I started. Only this time. I won't be able to lull myself to sleep at night with the thought of a permanent solution. Honestly, it would have been better if the poison had been allowed to run its course. I doubt it. It seems this is the fate the gods have chosen for me, for trying to escape. At least until someone breaks the golden rule. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. A lot. But it doesn't matter. I... I made a suicide pact with Ulpius last night. He's in exactly the same position as I am. Maliolus and Aurelius set the same trap for him a month after they did it to me. He and I are in this together. He's probably already thrown himself from the bluff into Maliolus's villa by now. If so, I'd never be able to live with myself, knowing I broke my promise to him. I doubt you could make it up to the bluff in time. I don't know who you are, or why you seem so determined to help me, but... Thank you. I'm all right. But please don't take too long. No. I did hear from Ulpius that she disappeared. It's very sad. She was such a lovely young woman. But I'd been locked in Maliolus's villa for months before she went missing, so... I can't help you, I'm afraid. So I guess they were friends before all that. 
What is your story? You mean my life story? Oh. Well... I grew up as part of a big family in Rome. Me and three older sisters. Our father found good husbands for my sisters. But I wasn't, uh, cut out for that kind of life. So he found me a job as a scribe for a prominent merchant. It was a good life for a while. Until seven months ago when the fires came. My colleagues and I worked desperately to try to protect our warehouse. We must have had a hundred workers passing buckets of water, chanting prayers to Vulcan. But they fell on deaf ears. The fire was relentless and it claimed everything and everyone. Well, almost everyone. My employer told me to grab what valuables I could and flee for the Tiber with the crowds. I remember diving into the river and then... The next thing I knew, I was waking up on the riverbank not far from here. Thank you. But to be honest, sometimes I think dying in that fire might have been a blessing. Given what's happened since. So... She, if she was given a job, she was working, she would presumably have been from a lower class family. She mentioned she's not cut out for that kind of life, the marriage kind of life. That could mean any number of things, possibly that she is a lesbian, possibly that she uh, brought some kind of ill repute to her family and her family thought that getting her out of the house without a husband who might also be tarnished would be a better way of coping uh, or just that she was unruly and needed some kind of master you know, presumably her sisters would all also have been named Yulia something or other so if that's your idea of a joke it's not funny go away yeah that that was fair I wondered what she would say to that. All right. May Apollo keep you safe. Who are you? Oh, the the other guard. Name's Rufius. Better watch your step. Sounds maybe Spanish. Can't talk long. Got to stay sharp. But uh, family's from Solution and Tigris, Babylon oh, province. From Babylon province. I've been All right. A long time now. You can join the legions, the sixth, the one they call Ironclads. Same way as everyone else. Because we're all in grave danger. Is it not obvious? Yeah, won't help you. Mm, the magistrate made me toss it in the chasm. Stupid. Going to have to improvise now. Hey, you want to take out this guy with a bow? If you were dealing with what I am, you wouldn't be either. And what's that? Nobody is supposed to know about that. Did Lucretia tell you? Okay. Look. Well, I guess I that answers one question. My best lately. All my joints ache constantly, and and the pain. As a way of messing with your head. I get stirred up by things that shouldn't bother me. And then there's the statues. And my doubts about my faith. And I just... I can definitely sympathize just with just understand. wanting to scream. Sounds great. Let's just all go scream into the chasm Maybe together. Patricia hasn't been able to do that presumably wouldn't Find break the rule. Make the pain go away. Until then, get out of my face. Oh, poor Virgil, trying to scrub that graffiti off his shop. Okay. There's, 
There's Fabia. Help! You have to do something! A man arrived in the baths. A real nasty sort, with his face all covered up. And he's got a weapon. You have to do something, or he's gonna break the golden rule. Thank you. He's still in there, somewhere. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. Do not what? go in there. Just don't. Why? I have a bad feeling about uh, that. All right, um, fine. Come and find me in my bakery instead. Please oh, be careful. you're the one I accidentally stole bread from. All right, then. Okay. So... Now she does not collapse the shrine. Okay. Cool. Let's go talk to Mr. Mr. Assassiny friend again. See what we can do now. Stop right there. I am looking for Tiberius Quinctius Crispus, otherwise known as Quinctius. Do you know where he is? And now we have the option to send him to the shrine. Why, yes, I think that seems like a good idea. Thank you. For your service to the Empire, I'll let you live for now. But you'd best make sure our paths don't cross again. I'd be just as happy if, uh, if our paths never crossed again. You just, you go do you, guy. Slowly follow him over here. And into the shrine he goes. I am a filthy lying degenerate. That's me. All right. Now I have a gun. Or a bow. <laughs> Take it. Bounty notice. By order of Emperor Nero, all loyal sons of Rome are ordered to hunt and execute the arsonist and murderer Tiberius Quinctius Crispus, a citizen from the Aventine district of Rome. He's about 40 to 50 years old, he's of average height, average build, has dark hair, and has one green eye and one blue eye. Typically clean-shaven. He's known associate of cultists and suffers from delusions of grandeur. So literally everything he told us about this guy. Yes, I did in fact take the weapon. And I'll be taking those arrows. And a single denarius. That sounds familiar, eh? Alright. And now we have a bow. And I think that's where I'm going to call it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this despite our early technical difficulties. And I will see you next week when we find out what's going to happen to me wandering around with a bow. <laughs>